Welcome to the worship service of Congregational United Church of Christ in Humboldt, Iowa. We are glad you are here. On this, our fourth Sunday of Advent, we draw near to celebrating the birth of the Christ child with a distant realization that the history of humanity is fraught with pain, especially the pain that comes accompanied by fear that leads to oppression and violence of one people against another. And it is into this world of fear that Jesus was born and through which his teachings would then and still does challenge and call for transformation. The opening words of an anonymous Jewish poet, I believe in the sun, even when the sun is not shining, were scrawled on a wall during the Holocaust. During this time of Advent, we examine our inclination to annihilate our fears by annihilating each other. The power of narrative and music helps to call us to choose a different response, that of transformation and reconciliation through hope and peace, joy and love. This Advent and Christmas, through music and light, we will affirm and act on the reasons why we can still believe, even when we are discouraged. I invite you to prepare an Advent wreath of some sort to use with you during worship that contains a center candle representing Christ and is encircled by four other candles. And remember, the shape and sizes of those candles, the colors, they don't matter.
we know we are not alone. Let us pray. Holy One, we thank you for the glimpses we catch of your gift of peace on earth, even in the midst of fear, of challenge, of struggle, even when we aren't sure that goodwill among us can be found. Ignite the flame of peace within us.
Isaiah chapter 9 verses 2 through 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in a pitch dark land, light has dawned. You have made the nation great. You have increased its joy. They rejoiced before you as with joy at the harvest, as those who divide plunder rejoice. As on the day of Midian, you shattered the yoke that burdened them, the staff on their shoulders, and the rod of their oppressor, because every boot of the thundering warriors and every garment rolled in blood will be burned, fuel for the fire. A child is born to us, a son is given to us, and authority will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be vast authority and endless peace for David's throne and for his kingdom, establishing and sustaining it with justice and righteousness now and forever. The gospel reading today is John chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. In the beginning was the word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word, and without the Word, nothing came into being. What came into being through the Word was life, and the life was the light for all people. The light shines in the darkness, and darkness doesn't extinguish the light. A man named John was sent from God. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light so that through him, everyone would believe in the light. He himself wasn't the light, but his mission was to testify concerning the light. The true light that shines on all people was coming into the world. The light was in the world and the wor world came into being through the light, but the world didn't recognize the light. The light came to his own people, and his own people didn't welcome him. But those who did welcome him, those who believed in his name, he authorized to become God's children, born not from blood, nor from human desire or passion, but born from God. The word became flesh and made his home among us. We have seen his glory, glory like that of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified about him, crying out, This is the one of whom I said, He who comes after me is greater than me, because he existed before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. As the law was given through Moses, so grace and truth came into being through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. God, the only Son who is at the Father's side, has made God known. We associate darkness with a number of unpleasant things. In the dark, a person tends to move slowly or to wander aimlessly. Because we can't see the possible danger that lies before us, we tend to be more fearful of what is in the dark. When Bob and I first moved to Creston, I was blessed to work in the media department at Green Valley, now Green Hills, Area Education Agency. At the department's edge was the entrance of, to one of the men's and women's restrooms. One day, as an individual entered one of the restrooms, one of my coworkers said, Shonda, did you see that? She didn't turn on the light. Typically, I would have considered not turning on the light when entering a dark room an odd thing. However, this particular individual was visually impaired to the extent that she was classified totally blind. So I simply replied, yeah, I don't think the light would have helped her. But, but stuttered my coworker, what about the dog? What about the dog? For the visually impaired individual, the dog, with its remarkable ability to see in the darkness, was a guiding light that offered her peace in knowing what lies 
before her um, and knowing that it would not bring her any harm. Over this season of Advent, this time of waiting, we have discovered ways in which each of us can be a light that brings hope and love and joy into our own lives and into the lives of others. But what about peace? Where is peace to be found? Where and how is peace to be found? Who's responsible for peace? As with hope and love and joy, we only need to turn to the Hebrew Testament and the Gospels to have some guidance. Indeed, every one of us is responsible for bringing hope and love and joy and peace into all of humanity's lives. The how and what of doing so is often difficult for us, though. For guidance, we turn to the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah understood, especially with peace, leadership matters. Good leaders depend upon the peace that they can provide for their people. They strive to find ways to ensure that the weak are protected from the strong who might carry out violence against them or load, lord their privileges over them. And so they search for ways to feed individuals who are food insecure, uh, homeless, or endangered of becoming homeless. Um, they seek ways to keep the lights on and the heats on, and they work with others to create more employment opportunities, better schools, and safer environments. And in doing so, they become the beacon of light in the lives of their people, a light that offers hope and joy, and love, and ultimately peace. Light and darkness are used in both Hebrew and New Testaments as metaphors for good and evil, order and chaos, security and danger, joy and sorrow, truth and untruth, life and death, even salvation and condemnation. Sadly, when we think of the term light and dark, we often think of the terms black and white. And this has unfortunately led us to refer to some acts like blackmail, blacklist, black mar, black death, those kind of things, in a manner that inadvertently places the color black in a negative light. Perhaps this demonstrates the limitations of the human language or of our humanness. When we refer to the black of night, we're not really speaking of the color, but of the lack of light. Just, just as the dark womb is a place of holiness and rebirth, the terms dark and light don't reference good and evil. Darkness Darkness is really a state of mind. Even, even a small light can dispel great darkness. Consider how a tiny candle can light up a dark room. And so we turn to the Gospels. Each of the four Gospels traces Jesus back to a particular beginning. Matthew traces Jesus' genealogy to Abraham. Mark begins his gospel by saying, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And then immediately talks about John the Baptist, who Isaiah prophesied would come before Jesus and introduce him. Luke begins the word with the word of the angel to Zechariah about the birth of John the Baptist, and to Mary of Jesus' coming birth. And then there's John, the Gospel of John. John takes us back to the very beginning. Before time, before the creation of the world, the Word who would come to us in human form and walk among us, die for us, and raise again to new life has been there standing with God from the start. 
God's first act was to create light. It was this light that first brought order to a formless void. And it is this light that brought the word that, that was brought by the word that brings order into the chaos of our lives and gives us peace. May the light of Christ shine forever in your life. Amen. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no. I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine. In times when humanity disappoints us, perhaps when even our own thoughts and behaviors disappoint us, it is an important act to call out, to name and claim the consequences of our wrongs. And in times of distress, it is a prophetic act to call out, to name and claim our belief in peace, for the world. Hear these statements of belief. I believe that humans seem to have a penchant for conflict and I believe that our fear has told us that we must win in order to survive and We believe even when we are discouraged. I invite you now to get into a comfortable position, to sit as quiet and as still as you can, take a deep breath, and enter into a listening posture. Perhaps even close your eyes or fix them on a candle as we prepare for a time of prayer. Word made flesh, our wait is almost over. And yet there is still so much to do. Last minute gifts to buy, wrap and send off, that card we forgot, cookies and bread and candy to get made homes to clean, Christmas services to finalize. Again this year, life finds us not ready, not ready for your return. How can that be? The Word, you have been with us from the beginning. So how can we not be ready for you to come again? You have never left us. Is it because we have a tendency to pack you away from our lives with the decorations of the season? Help us to know throughout the year and to understand and to see and to seek the love, the peace, the joy, and the hope that you illumine our lives with each and every day. Even in the year of 2020, amid all the angry words and the horrendous acts of nature, the pandemic, the hunger, war, being confined to our homes, you still give us the light of hope through a vaccine. You still give us the light of joy through the aligning of planets and moons and stars. You still give us the glow of loving one another. You still give us the brightness of a promise of peace. May we in turn 
offer some of that bright and beautiful hope and love and joy and peace to those who have none. Challenge us to reach out to people in need, not only with a check to support a particular endeavor, but with actual contact in ministries of sacrifice and service. Let us actively pray for your healing hand in the lives of Gordy and Jean and Ken and Marcine, Terry and Tracy and Melissa and Ruth and C.A. and Richard, Sylvia Ann, Bill and Dottie, and all those we haven't named but are on our hearts. the countless first responders and the essential workers throughout the world who are so very, very tired. In all we do, remind us that we are called to proclaim your love through witness and service. In you, the Word, who came and dwelt among us, we pray. Amen. If the season of Advent teaches us nothing else, it teaches us that God has done great things through unlikely people and in unexpected ways. We too give thanks that we, by God's Spirit, can do great things. We too can lift up those who are laid low. We too can fill the hungry with good things. We too, through our open-hearted generosity, can proclaim that nothing will be impossible with God. We can do all of that and more by contributing not only to our local church, but at this particular time, to the Christmas Fund of the UCC Pension Board. Our contributions will help retired clergy and retired church lay staff and their survivors pay bills, maintain health insurance, and meet emergency needs. Our contributions tell our former pastors and lay church staff members that they are not forgotten that they are loved, and that they and their ministries are appreciated and remembered. Please remember to include a gift to the UCC Christmas Fund along with your other offerings during this time. And if you give to the Christmas Fund, make sure you make a note of that so Beth will know. Also, if you haven't copied off your candy cane and returned it along um, with your offerings, do so now so um, that the fellowship can continue their ministries. Let us join together in our prayer of dedication. Holy One who scatters the proud and lifts up the lowly, Mighty One who fills the hungry and sends the rich away empty, receive these our humble gifts, bless them, that by your Spirit they might bring hope and healing, encouragement and joy, sustenance and love. Amen.
Hotelin on the Mountain is part of the repertoire of Christmas songs that were created by people who endured brutal hardships as the result of African colonization and North American slavery. Though people of African descent were ripped from much of their cultural heritage, they maintained their heritage of group song, punctuated by West African rhythms and voice stylings. The safest thing for oppressed people to sing about was the religious beliefs that, though first forced upon them by their oppressors, later gave many hope in the midst of suffering. In this perhaps best known of the African American Christmas songs, the words seeker and watchman are thought by some to have been code words for those seeking freedom on the Underground Railroad. Go Tell It on the Mountain was made popular in the 19th century by the Fisk Jubilee Singers as the college students themselves, freed slaves, traveled the country to raise money and awareness. They were turned away from hotels, railway wait, waiting rooms, and even some churches because of their color. As we sing, let us honor them. Honor all who have endured slavery and the continued systematic racism caused by slavery. Let us go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Indeed, the Prince of Peace that calls us to break the chains of oppression is born.
pick up and hold high this week's candle for our benediction. In this season of waiting, know this, we wait for justice. We wait for restored health. We wait for wholeness. We wait for peace. And so, my friends, like bells ringing out the good news, the light has dawned and shines on all people. Fill the night left by sadness with messages of peace. Go into your lives, humming the tunes that keep the peace alive in you and that spurs you on in your work of justice and reconciliation. Raise your voices and repeat after me. Do not be afraid. Go in peace and love and hope and joy to serve our Lord. Amen.